Hello, I'm Lily from Estonia. I grew up in an orphanage with my brother Joe. He's two years older than me and we're total opposites. But before I continue, please like and subscribe and you might get a kiss from your true love. My big brother Joe had shiny blonde hair and blue eyes and he always got all the attention. Look at this gorgeous kid. He's so beautiful. But I was the opposite. I had dark hair and dark brown eyes and my skin wasn't as fair and no one ever said I was pretty. They hardly noticed me at all. Joe was tall and outgoing and everybody liked him. I was short for my age and the mean girls loved to tease me. Aw, poor Lily. She's just so ugly. How does it feel to be a loser with a perfect brother? But Joe always had my back. Maybe you should learn to respect others. Oh, for you, Joe? I'll learn anything. I'll learn how to respect others and how to cook and clean. I'll even learn how to give birth. You don't learn how to give birth. You just give birth. I agree. You're right. You're so smart. See, Joe? I learned my lesson. I respected her. Now love me, Joe, please. In school, things weren't much better. Joe was super smart and almost a genius. Joe, that's amazing. A perfect score. I could barely pass my exams, and I had a hard time paying attention in class. Sometimes I talked to the other kids when I wasn't supposed to, and I got out of my seat and I ran around the room, but I couldn't help it. Lily, sit down. Most of the teachers didn't like me at all. One time I was in grumpy old Miss Copple's class, and I really had to go to the bathroom. The break just ended two minutes ago. You couldn't go then? Oh wait, you were busy playing. The only thing you do in school. No bathroom for you. But it's an emergency. Miss Copple didn't budge. I tried to hold it, but a minute later, I peed my pants. Ew! Joe caught me crying in the hallway. What's wrong? Miss Copple wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. Joe's face turned bright red and he stormed into Miss Copple's class. You stinky witch. Maybe a bitter old lady like you shouldn't be teaching. You should be at home fighting with your husband who's lost his hearing because of your constant screaming and will go blind soon looking at your hideous face. Miss Copple sent Joe to the principal's office and he got detention for two weeks. I felt so bad. I'm sorry I'm weird and stupid and always causing trouble. Don't say that about yourself, Lily. None of that is true. Yes, it is. You're just pretending it's not. Don't worry about me and my problems. I'll handle them on my own. You don't have to be my big brother anymore. No way. I'll always be your big brother. And I'll always have your back, no matter what. And one day, I hope you'll see how special and smart and beautiful you are. Joe hugged me and I cried like a big baby. Then one day, the most amazing thing happened. We were adopted by a really nice couple. They had a big house. Joe and I got our own rooms and new clothes. They even enrolled us in a fancy school. I was nervous at first because school was still hard and I always got distracted. I was scared that my new teachers would hate me too. But then my new parents took me to the doctor. Lily has ADHD, which means she's a bit hyperactive and has trouble paying attention. But she's a smart girl. Her IQ is well above average. I went to therapy for a while to help me learn to stay focused. It was difficult at first, but Joe and my parents were really supportive and eventually I got better. I started getting A's on my tests and I even won student of the month for best behavior. When Joe and I reached high school, our lives totally changed. One day, Joe and I were hanging out at the mall when a strange woman ran up to us. Your face is a work of art. Have you ever thought of being a model? Not really. I Stick with me, darling. I'm gonna make you a star. The woman was a modeling agent. Joe signed a contract with her, and soon, every other weekend, he was doing photo shoots all over the city. My life was much better, too. My grades were at the top of my class. I had a bunch of new friends. And when I looked in the mirror for the first time, I liked what I saw, especially since my mom always told me how pretty I was and that I should love myself just as I am. I had a new found confidence and everyone noticed. Even though Joe and I weren't together all the time, we were still close. We had our own lives and that was okay. We were always there for each other. Then one day, our dad got a new job and we moved across town. Another family, twice as rich as my parents, lived next door and they had a daughter my age. The moment Joe saw her, he started acting strange. He was really dying to meet her. Oh, love at first sight, something only beautiful people do. Why don't you just go over there and say hello? Just say hello? It's not that easy. It has to be just right. She's my destiny. She's my true love. We're meant to be. We started thinking of ways to make them meet. What made it harder was that she was homeschooled. We saw a lot of sophisticated teachers coming 
morning and leaving the house. Joe took one of my shirts and went to her house, pretending he found it in the yard and it belonged to the girl. But a maid opened the door and took it, then slammed the door in Joe's face. One time, I saw the mystery girl leaving her house, and I started calling out random names. Emily! Sarah! Anna! Amber! But she still didn't look up. A couple of weeks passed, and I thought Joe would have moved on, but he was still determined to meet this girl. He hatched a new plan every day, but none of them worked. I needed a break, so I snuck off to the park to sketch. As I was sketching an oak tree, I heard someone walk up behind me. I turned to see a cute boy smiling at me. Those are pretty good. Your shading and detail are amazing. I froze. I'd never shown anyone my drawings before. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. The boy's name was Ryan. He was a couple of years older than me, and he was a talented artist. We talked for hours. Every time he looked into my eyes, my heart skipped a beat. Geez, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was so late. I have to go. Maybe we could meet up tomorrow and, uh talk about art? Sorry, I can't. I was such a dork. What was I thinking? Asking a cute boy like Ryan out. He must already have a girlfriend. I wanted to crawl into a hole. It's okay. Sorry I asked. No, it's not like that. I'd love to see you again, but I'm leaving for New York tomorrow for art school. My heart sank. This doesn't have to be goodbye. Ryan pulled out one of his sketches from his notebook. He wrote his phone number on the back and gave it to me. I want you to have it. I can't take this. You can give it back when I see you again. On my walk home, every time I thought about Ryan, I couldn't help but smile. I turned the corner onto my street, and then I saw something insane. The mystery girl was scaling the side of her house like a cat burglar. I hid behind a tree and texted Joe, but then the girl came charging at me like a maniac. She tried to grab my phone. Give it to me. Let go, you crazy girl. My phone slipped out of my hand, fell to the ground, and broke. I was so mad. I turned to yell at her, but then she started bawling like a big baby. I'm sorry about your phone. I just didn't know what to do. Her name was Sophia, and her parents made her break up with her boyfriend because he was poor. They won't let me see him or talk to him. My heart's been ripped to pieces. It hurts so bad. Please make it stop. Don't cry. Things will be okay. How? Thankfully, Joe walked up just then. Sophia took one look at him and got all googly-eyed. Then she got confused. I can't do this. Sophia pushed Joe and ran away crying. The next day, Sophia showed up at her door. What I did to you wasn't cool. I was having a hard time. If you don't mind me asking, what's wrong? <sighs> well, I'm broken. Excuse me. If I could just squeeze past you. Each time life smiles at me, bad things happen shortly after. I fell in love with our gardener's son. It was a secret because I knew my parents would never approve. I don't know how, but they found out and things got really bad. I'm so sorry. If you could just step to the side a bit, I could get out of your way and they fired him and his father and forced me to break up with him. Then they took my phone and homeschooled me for a while. My dad is an important politician and he can't risk his reputation. And now, every morning, I wake up in a puddle of tears. That's so sad. Yes, very sad. I've got an idea. Why don't you two be friends? It might make you both feel better. Over the next few months, Joe and Sophia started getting closer and so did our parents. Joe started dressing in expensive clothes, buying Sophia fancy gifts, and he'd brag to Sophia and her parents about how much money he made modeling. Once, Sophia's parents invited us for dinner. Oh, neighbors, you have such a strong, confident, independent young man. I bet girls are fighting over him all the time. Yes, but I have eyes only for one girl. As Joe looked at Sophia and she blushed, everyone noticed the two and smiled. Oh, this is wonderful. We've been so worried about Sophia. I'm so happy she's found someone like you. We had to protect her, you know. She was tricked <gasps> and manipulated by a dirty poor boy that stole her heart. Ugh, poor people. You can't trust any of them. They're all liars and cheats. That's not true. Oh, you sweet, naive girl. You'll learn soon enough. <laughs> then Sophia's parents laughed at me, like what I said was some big joke. I'm not naive. You're just wrong. Joe and I used to be poor. We're not liars and cheats. We're not dirty, and we're not bad people. Uh, Joe's an exception, of course. Who knew an adopted orphan could be so perfect? You guys hit the jackpot with your son. Uh, your daughter, well, she's now Sophia. <laughs> You're right about that, honey. Joe lowered his head. My parents looked away, and I was about to explode. What's that supposed to mean? 
Thank you for the meal. We must get going. When we got home, my parents sat me and Joe down for a talk. Joe, we don't want you seeing Sophia anymore. No, that's not happening. I love her. You can't tell me what to do. Stop yelling at Dad. Son, what her parents said about your sister is unacceptable. They were just joking. They're really nice once you get to know them. Are you blind? Sophia's parents are jerks. And ever since you've been hanging out with them, you've changed. If I have to impress Sophia's parents to get their blessing, then I'll do it. True love is worth it. But you wouldn't know anything about love. You've never had a boyfriend and you look like you sleep in a trash can. Don't talk to your sister like that. That's enough. No more Sophia and that's final. Then Joe got mad and shoved Dad. Dad fell and hit his head hard on the table. Dad! I rushed to Dad's side. He was really hurt. Mom called the ambulance. Then I looked up and saw Joe. I'm sorry. Joe ran out of the house. Dad had a minor concussion, and we spent the night in the emergency room. By the time we got back home, all of Joe's things were gone. We heard from the neighbors that he and Sophia moved into her parents' villa in Paris. Dad was weak after the injury, so I helped him out at the office. Staying on top of my schoolwork and helping Dad was tough, but I enjoyed spending more time with him. My parents and I tried calling Joe, but he never answered, which made me really sad. My new friend Ryan always found ways to cheer me up. He sent me funny sketches and MSA videos. One summer, he came back to town and we sat under the oak tree. We saw a boy and a girl playing on the swings and I started to cry. What's wrong? I miss my brother. He was my best friend and always had my back. I'm scared I'll never see him again. He's your brother and he could never stop loving you. I'm sure he'll come back to you one day. Then Ryan handed me a sketchbook and I drew a picture of me and Joe. Ryan encouraged me to study art, and eventually, I started selling my drawings. Five years later, we got married in a small ceremony in our backyard, and soon after, we had a baby. But there were complications. I felt this horrible pain, and the machine started to beep. As the doctors raced to save me, I cried out, Joe! My brother! Joe! Come to me! Then, I fainted. I woke up from a coma two days later, and when I opened my eyes, I saw Joe and Sophia sitting beside me, with tears in their eyes. Joe? Yes, Lily. Is that you? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry, Lily. I I'm so sorry for everything. I looked up at my parents. They smiled and nodded. I knew from the look in their eyes that they'd forgiven Joe and wanted me to do the same. You broke our promise. You said you'd always have my back, but you chose Sophia and her parents over us. My parents are just mean and have been controlling my life since forever. We had enough and we couldn't take it anymore, so we left and they cut us off. But it's been so hard. I couldn't find work. We barely had enough money for food and rent, but I was ashamed to come back and ask for help. We felt like we broke your family. We didn't want to make things worse. Then we heard you were in a coma, so we came immediately. I couldn't let you down again. Lily, I'm not asking you to forgive me. I'm asking you to let me earn the privilege to be your big brother again. <sighs> You'll always be my big brother. I just wanted to see you. I would have helped you no matter what. Then Joe hugged me and I hugged him back. 